I'm just breathing in and taking a moment to fully enjoy today your presence and the generational sense of our scripture readings today. I just love to hear the faithfulness of our families and their children and their children's children. Can you say amen? amen? It's good to come into the house of the Lord to worship the Lord together, to bring our joys, to bring our challenges, to see friends that we've recently made, to see lifelong friends, to be together with family over three-day weekends. Oh, if we could make them four- and five-day weekends, it'd be even better. But it's good to come into the house of the Lord. Um, uh, one additional prayer request, uh, in addition to the Wagner family, I received a call this morning uh, from the Combs family. Henry is very ill, and I'll be visiting uh, with the family this afternoon. So remember him in your prayers. He's in hospice at home. Um, just ask that the Lord will draw close to him uh, and the Combs family uh, today as well. It is indeed Memorial Day weekend, and it's a time in which we reflect upon the life and sacrifice of many of our men and women. There's a difference, uh, there's a subtle difference, although they're often linked together, uh, Memorial Day and Veterans Day. Uh, the subtle difference is Memorial Day is in memory of those who gave their lives, and Veterans Day honors those who, are, who have given of their service on behalf of our country and are still living. Memorial Day was first celebrated, or I should say as a day of remembrance, honoring those who gave their lives during the Civil War, 750,000 lives were lost during the Civil War, which lasted a little over four years. Three quarters of a million young men were lost as our nation struggled with what it meant to be a nation united as a nation over the issue of freedom and equality for all within the nation. A struggle which, which went right to the core of the two divisions, passionate each side of the war was about their viewpoint until such time as the war ended, assuring and guaranteeing in the beginnings of our nation's history that we believed in equality and freedom for all. Do you believe that, friends, today? I believe it with all of my heart. I believe it not because the nation declared it. I believe it because it was declared by Christ on the cross. I believe it because it's at the bedrock of our faith as Christians. And let me be very clear that anything contrary to that or short of it does not emanate from the courts of heaven, but from the pits of hell. When we discount and devalue one another either by position or skin color, and we create castes, and we create inequalities in the Christian community, is it is not of a God, it is of, from the pits of hell. It's awful quiet out there. Do you believe that today, friends? Yes. Amen. So today, while we see, while we see the sacrifice that our nation paid, that we might have equality, that we might have justice for all. We see and honor 
their gift of life, that these truths might go forward from a secular standpoint. But we spend some time and reflect about what brings that equality today to us as a people, that we might look forward to assure that within the Christian community that we embrace that truth as well. So what does Memorial Day mean to you? We're going to reflect for just a few minutes about Memorial Day from a secular standpoint and then go to the scriptures to see what the scriptures say about creating memorials that will strengthen our is rooted in Jesus Christ. You see, memories have a powerful effect on us. We are today the sum total of our memories. That seems such a simple, a, a simple proclamation. Is it true? We are today the sum total of our memories. Is that a truism? It's so simple at its base. If you remember nothing but how you were told that you were an insignificant person all through your early childhood years and you lived in an abusive relationship in the home or your sight of growing up, you probably grew up with great insecurities and struggle and may still be struggling because you have no memories of childhood or young adulthood, of love, of fostering, of nurture, of value. On the other hand, if you grew up in a home that was filled with love, appreciation, and admiration of your development of a child, you probably grew up in a more healthy family. And as a result, although you may struggle with issues and insecurities and figuring out life, as we all do from time to time, you had a base and you remember that your childhood was happy and you can build on that base. But I will assure you today that you are today fundamentally a sum total of your memories of yesterday. So as we look at how memories affect and shape us to become the people that we are today, we will also journey to find out how we can create powerful memorials, that is, things to be remembered, that will shape us, strengthen us today and going forward. Having said that, and share with you where we are going, not all memories are pleasant memories. As Memorial Day is, we will be remembering those who died that we might have freedom for all. Memorial Day for some is a very rough day. As one veteran writes, Memorial Day is a rough day for me. It's a day of remembering. Remembering can be a curse. When you spent years of trying to forget, it's even worse when you are mad at yourself for not being able to remember. It's strange that you forgot so many things you wanted to remember. And remember so much of the things that you really wanted to forget. You see, I spent 11 months, 12 days, in a sunny southeastern Asia, I came back physically whole. As they said in Marine Corps, no members missing. By the grace of God, good training, and just plain pure dumb luck. I suffered no more than a slight hearing loss, a concussion or two, and 25 years of mixed blessing and memories. Memorial Day is not a day for selfish evaluation or selfish thoughts. So I turn my remembrance to other people, places, and things. And he writes, I remember heat. Heat that kept you awake. Heat that kept you from getting a full breath for weeks. 
heat that, heat that sapped your strength so that you were beyond exhaustion after minor exertion. Heat that made you tired, that kept you from sleeping. Heat that made you sweat buckets. Heat that made you feel frozen when it dropped to 70 degrees. Heat that just sapped who you were. I remember the rice patties. They could get you killed or they could save your life. I remember the dikes that stopped bullets, but could leave you exposed if you were dumb enough to walk on them. The water that smelled of feces, but was better than not drinking at all. I remember rain that broke the intolerable heat. Rain that was as gentle as silk or as stinging as bees. Rain that let you get a good clean shower and rotted your feet in your boots until they bled. I remember the sun. The sun that created the most beautiful sunrises and sunsets that I've ever seen in my life. The sun that you couldn't look at if you ever wanted to see again. The sun that could make you feel warm without touching it. And at the same time, bake you. But above all, I remember the people, the faces, the personalities, the human events, the cries, still crowd my days and nights with pleasure and pain. And events, I remember entire conversations in explicit, explicit detail. I cannot remember the names, but more than a few, and I don't know why. Shouldn't this be the other way around? I remember being dropped in a landing zone. And as the Yui took off, the pilot took a round in the nose after he lifted off, leaving me in the clearing. I remember every detail of the guy next to me who was to go home two weeks but could no longer bear the pain and ended his life. I remember the guitar songs taught me by the kid from Boston who drove Jeep until he went over a 105 millimeter shell buried in the dirt and tripped the wire. Of the hundreds I knew, I kicked myself for remembering so few as they gave so much, especially on this Memorial Day. I should be remembering each one by name. I will not spoil it by forgetting even one of their number. God help me. I will remember. From this day forward, I will carry their memory with me and their spirit with me as a living memorial to their sacrifice, their dedication to God, country, duty, and honor. They shall not pass gently into the night as long as I have breath in my body to shout to this world, remember, remember, for God's sake, remember their sacrifice, wrote James E. Leaker of those who he served with. Ordinary people called to extraordinary detail. Ordinary people who were faithful. Ordinary people who never set out to be heroes. Ordinary people who, because of their faithfulness, went in duty to their country. Ordinary people, because of their faithfulness to duty, who conquered extraordinary circumstances and remained faithful to the call of duty. Ordinary people who we, we owe a great debt of gratitude as they gave their lives that we might have the freedoms today. What can their example of faithfulness teach in echo to each one of us today. 
I find in their lives an example of being, being faithful day by day to their call and to their purpose. They were being prepared day by day for the challenges that they would ultimately be called to. By being committed to the small things, the routine things, the day-by-day -day things, each day they were being prepared for the next day. We are called, we are called to remember. We are called to have a, a firm, unyielding commitment to Christ. We are called to be faithful to Him. And one thing beyond all, this Memorial Day, calls us to remember that the freedom that we enjoy in this land isn't free. The freedom that we have in this land isn't free. We live in a land of freedom, but it isn't free. Three quarters, three quarters of a million people gave their lives in the struggle of the Civil War that this nation might be a nation of freedom. And that freedom comes with the price of the blood of our brothers and sisters. And so too, the freedoms that we have today will come, and the freedoms that we have in the future will come through sacrifice, through sacrifices on our behalf that we make in commitment to be faithful to Christ in giving our lives to Christ. For you see, the freedom that we have as a church comes at a cost. And it comes at a cost as you, brothers and sisters in Christ, are willing to pay the, pay the price of faithfulness to Him through your daily modeling of what it means to be a Christian, through your daily modeling in faithfulness. You see those younger eyes of the generation coming up are looking and observing every word, every action, and it will be their recording and their remembrance as they enter into adulthood. How do I want to model and mentor my life to the next generation? More than the words that you proclaim will be the lives that you live. It's an awesome calling to be faithful. Can you say amen? And it's a struggle. It's a daily struggle that none of us have come to the fullness in or have achieved. But we all come humbly to Christ and say, Christ, help us to be faithful in our every word and in our every action to you so that all who are alongside of us, all who come behind us, all who are ahead of us, might see and find us faithful. And beyond those, Father, may we find your approval in being faithful. It's an awesome calling, isn't it? But it's the calling of God. And it's through that calling the, that we might find faithful memorials that others will see and recognize as a testimony to our Lord Jesus Christ. I find it interesting sometimes that some of the things, uh, the, some of the memorials that families create carry on from one generation to next. Some of them are as simple as mom and dad taking the child by hand and going to the place where they often walked before they were husband and wife. And when they're about eight or ten years, taking them to the tree wherein they carved their initials in 20 or 30 years ago. Where you see those initials, that's dad's initials, and you see the heart and mom's initials underneath, that's where we met. And one day you'll meet a young lady or a young man who will make your heart beat just a little faster. And by taking them to those memorials, as your family sets forth family traditions, as taking time in the evening and starting out just having prayer with your family. If you don't have family prayer, just try it once a week. Maybe beginning Friday evening, entering into the Sabbath, 
bringing them as you are today to the house of worship, that they may hear the Sabbath school classes, that they might participate in our corporate worship and talking with one another, and as a congregation strengthening the family, creating memorials and remembrances that tomorrow they will be better because of the memories that were created today. We indeed are the sum total of our memories. Faithfulness is found in the book of Hebrews. And I'd like you to open your Bibles together. We'll just look at a few factors of faithfulness that we find there. So as we do so, consider in your life, how, how is your relationship with Christ today? In what areas might your faith be strengthened? Hebrews chapter 11 shares with us what faith as the foundation of our faithfulness will give us and how we can grow and expand in our faith. And I just want to touch on the points of faith in Hebrews chapter 11, starting with verse 3. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which were, not, uh, which were seen were not made of things which do appear. Through faith we what? Through faith we what? Through faith we, we understand. So let me just, by way of comparison and contrast, does the Bible say through reasoning we understand? Oh, that has the implication that we don't need to be reasonable people. We just leave reason at the doorstep and just absorb everything that comes by faith. No, we use reasoning, but it's through faith that we understand the things that are not seen. It takes an element of faith to gain understanding and to gain a faith that will carry us through. Not everything can be just intellectually understand, understood. So it's a combination of reason and faith. Verse 4, By faith Abel offered unto Cain a more excellent sacrifice, by which he obtained a witness that was righteous, testifying of his gifts, and by it, he being dead, continued to speak. It takes a willingness to obey God. When God asks us to do something, our faith is strengthened. By faith, verse 5, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. For his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Wouldn't it be amazing? Wouldn't it be amazing just to be walking along? Boom, you're in the kingdom. It's going to be a great day. If I don't last until Jesus coming, if I'm laid to rest, I hope he calls me forth. All right, Rick, it's time to come forth. Grave's going to be open. Going to take one giant step out of it. Be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. To walk with God. Whether it's, whether it's from this life or a time of sleep that we might hear those words, that which he, or that which she did, pleased God. That's faithfulness. That's what will take us day by day, not growing in outstanding, phenomenal ways. You run a marathon one step at a time. You climb a mountain one foot at a time. You live the Christian life one moment at a time. But without faith, verse 6 says, it's impossible to please Him. For he that comes to God must believe that He is, and He is a rewarder of them that which diligently seek Him. By faith, being warned of God, of things not yet seen, moved with fear, prepared an ark, Noah, by faith, being warned of God. There is a warning that comes to us, wait a minute, the end is coming. And he became heir of righteousness, which is seen by faith. Verse 8, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out of a place which he should after receive of an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whether he went. By faith, there is a calling to go someplace, to journey somewhere. Sometimes it's physically. Sometimes it's getting to know people you don't know. 
but it's a calling out and a journeying to. It's not a static experience if you're walking by faith. God wants to call you out to go someplace, to do something different than what you're doing today, friends. Do you believe that? Have you listened? Have you heard the calling of the Holy Spirit on your heart and in your life today? So that day by day as you're growing in the Lord, when the call comes, just as surely as it will come, you will say, oh, I recognize that voice. I have to go. Imagine the phone call coming. Oh, Lord, now is that really you or somebody else speaking? We get there, don't we, friends? Because it's been a while since we've spoken with God. But by faith, when you say, God, where do you want me to go? I'm willing to go. Just show me. Just speak to me by the power of your Holy Spirit. I'll go on the job, in the classroom, in the church. I'll be a witness for you wherever you put me. And that will be a memory you will carry with you. And the person that you invite to accept Christ will remember as well. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise as, a, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob and the heirs, of him the same of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is what? Is God. He's looking for a city not made of human hands or human design, as good as the church is, as good as the greatest nation on the earth is. It falls way far short of what God has planned for us. The city whose human hands is not the design or maker of, but the builder and maker is God. Through faith, Sarah receives strength. So through faith we receive strength. She received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. She was blessed with life. And through our faithfulness, we too will be blessed by life in influencing the lives of others. Verse 13 says, though all of these died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and they were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and they confessed them. And they were strangers and pilgrims on this earth. Huh. We hardly feel like we're strangers and pilgrims here. We have nice homes, even the most modest ones. We have good food on our table. We have transportation, and all of our needs are taken together. All of our needs are provided for, and we're, we are well taken care of. Hardly do we feel that we are strangers in this land. But there's a better place prepared for us. We are strangers and pilgrims on this earth. As good as this gets, it pales in comparison with what's waiting for us. We are the great, we are, this is not about nation building. We are the, we are the greatest nation in the world. We have people all around the world coming to our nation to enjoy the freedom and prosperity that we have here. But we, the, the nation as it is, is not what we are called to. For our country is the unseen country of heaven. And if we are not pilgrims like immigrants traveling to our country, we ought to be immigrants traveling to the kingdom. What do you say? I believe when I arrive in the kingdom, I don't want to be alone. I want to be part of a vast number of thousands and tens of thousands and millions that we gather around the throne of God. How about you, friends? For they that say such things declare plainly they seek a country. The faithful have in mind of that which they are traveling, through, uh, traveling to and truly if they had been mindful of that country from whence, whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But we indeed, verse 16 says, desire a better country, that is a heavenly one, 
Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. Isn't that amazing? When God looks back, one day, one day He's going to look back at the history of your life, at the history of His people. And He's going to look back and He's going to say, faithful, faithful, stumbled and fell into sin, asked forgiveness, faithful, faithful, come home, friend. I prepared a place for you, a better place where there'll be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more suffering. But as we look forward to that place, Hebrews chapter 12, that indeed is what we have forward to look forward to, but our greatest friend and all of our hope is wrapped up in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, 3, and 28. Because this is the challenge of being faithful. This is the creating memories today that will fashion our life today and tomorrow. Setting our focus, our eyes, our heart, our spirit. Hebrews 12, 2. Looking Unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. I can't wait, friends. Can you? We get caught looking this way, looking that way, looking that way, looking to our past. It says in Hebrews that we ought to be lifting our eyes heavenward and looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. I can't wait. For consider him that endured such a con uh, contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be weary and faint in your minds and only remember... I'm adding, and only remembering your own worthlessness and sinfulness. Looking to Jesus. Verse 28 says, Wherefore, we receive a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear or respect. creating powerful memories today that will prepare us for tomorrow through our Lord Jesus Christ, who we look forward to as the beginning and finisher of our faith. Faith bringing faithfulness that brings memorials that shape us today and tomorrow that will shape us for the kingdom when Jesus comes again. May we be faithful in serving him and look forward to his soon second coming that all, that, all those who come in contact with us might have memories of our faith in faithfulness to Christ. Amen. Our closing hymn today is hymn number 607. Pastor, if I may. Please. It was intended to be 607. However, having Step heard right. your um, message, I'm going to invite the congregation to turn to 517. My faith looks up to thee. We will sing all verses. And as we do so, please stand.
my faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me while I pray, take all my guilt away, oh, let me died for me, oh, may my love to thee, pure, warm, and changeless be. Father, it is during this season that we remember the millions of lives that have been given that we might have freedom and temporal goodness that we enjoy today. Father, the sacrifice that they paid is beyond our comprehension. But we look back, Father, at the gift of your Holy Son, who willingly endured the cross, that our sin might be forgiven. And as he yielded his life, that we might have eternal life, Father. It just compels us. To say, we don't understand how that could be done. But we come humbly to you with thankful hearts that your goodness and your grace flows out from him to us. So, Father, help our faith to grow. Deepen our faithfulness that others will see you working in and through our lives, that we will be faithful and the memorials of our life will be marked as faithfully influencing our family and our friends for you. Bless us with your goodness and your spirit. In Christ's precious name, amen.